on this. Lord God, we just want to welcome you into this place this morning, God. I pray, God, that as you, uh, as your word is brought forth, Lord, in song, and uh, Lord, is preached, Lord, I pray that you just uh, use Derek in a mighty way this morning, God, that you'll, uh, Lord, just speak through him. May our hearts and our minds be open and receptive to your word, God. And Lord, I pray that you will bind the devil from this place this morning, God, that your word will go forth in a mighty way. And if someone isn't, doesn't know you, today will be their day of salvation, God. And we'll give you the glory and the honor and the praise for every bit of it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. He is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. I love you, Lord. fails me all my 
days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God and all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I will see of the goodness of God
Good morning, church family. If y'all have a seat for a moment, my name is Joe Tanner, and I'm one of our pastors here, and and I have a lot of people on stage with me this morning. Amen? Awesome. These are our primary partners from around the world, and church, thank you for allowing us to bring them in and supporting that. They are here from different parts of the world. They're going to share a little bit with you this morning, and uh, then I'll share a little more with you. We'll start here with Aman and Shanti. Hi, we are Aman and Shanti, and we are so thankful for your love, prayer, and support. Uh, we serve in South Asia, um, and we are uh, shepherding a house church planting movement. Our vision is that every person in our district and the surrounding regions would have the opportunity to be discipled, hear the word of God, and be part of a healthy house church. That includes over 6,200 villages and 257 different people groups. It's a huge task, but God is at work. Um, We would love to talk to you back at our table. We've got Indian snacks. We've got some girls who served with us doing henna. um, But more than anything, we'd like to share with you what God is doing. Um, And we're also here on sabbatical, and so we would love to get to know your family as well over dinner or taking the kids to the park and letting them play. Um, But it's just really important to us to use this time to get to know you better. Hello, my name is Nick. This is my wife, Jem. Uh, We are missionaries in the Philippines. We run and organize a sports ministry called BP2. It stands for Better Player Beyond Performance. And our vision is to see Asia impacted for Christ through sports. Uh, We are currently here to raise partnership and support. And we also uh, would ask that you all could come out and see us in the lobby afterwards so that you can talk with all of us missionaries. Of course, we also want to say thank you so much for all of your giving and support to the Acts 1-8 and to the ministry that's going on around the world. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mike. This is my wife, Jane, and my daughter, Barrett. Uh, We want to thank you first for all the support that you've ever given us um, over the last nine years. Uh, We served in Romania for nine years, and um, we planted a uh, church with uh, your help and and, and the Holy Spirit. And uh, you you look at our caution tape, and the reason we're doing that is because we are currently in a season of restoration, as well as the work is not done yet. And so we would love to talk to you, come back and uh, see us at the table, and, uh, you know, hear about what we have planned for the future, uh, what God has planned for the future, as well as some of the uh, projects that we are planning coming up. Hi, my name is Tim. This is my wife, Amy. Um, We actually work in Northern Virginia. Um, We are so thankful to be back here. Um, back here home and thankful for you and for your support and partnership and prayers. Um, It means a lot to us. We work with Arabic-speaking Muslims in Northern Virginia um, and the metro D.C. area. And you might think, wait, missions, I thought that was overseas somewhere. But God is bringing the nations right here. God has brought the nations to our doorstep. And Northern Virginia is incredibly diverse. Our, Our prayer is that as we engage Muslims with the gospel there, that they would be able to take the gospel back to their people groups around the world and that the gospel would spread from here to see then disciples made back in their countries with little access to the gospel. Um, We would love to have you come join us and pray for us. Um, There are a couple trips coming up, one in May, one in June. Um, There's information back on the table. Come talk to us. We would love to have you come join us in engaging the nations next door, but also a little bit of training and learning how can you do that right here in your own community. So thank you. We also have some hot dates back there and Arabic coffee. Hot date. (laughs) I'm I'm just going to enjoy that one. Just going to enjoy that one. So it's a fruit. Tim, Tim's got a hot date face right now. So, uh, we got to see if we can work that into the 11 o'clock service, y'all. Right? Uh, <laughs> we, she has those little f- fruit dates back there, dried from Saudi Arabia, that you can eat, and some coffee. Uh, 
And so that doesn't taste like the coffee that you're expecting, just to give you a fair heads up on that. Uh, as a church family, we pray, we give, we go, we send. And, and this is a result of 23, 24 years of a church praying, giving, going, and sending. You know, uh, this, is, this is a special opportunity for us to have our folks here. And thank you for praying for them. Thank you for giving to support them. Thank you for going alongside of them. If you're in here and you've come alongside of them in their field of work, would you raise your hand if you've gone on a short-term work with them at some point? Okay. And we're sending more. We have one who leaves today that is going to a very dark place in Africa. We had one who left about two weeks ago that's in Central Asia. Friends, we, we have to take the hope of Jesus Christ to the nations. Listen to this, what it says in Psalms 67, 3 and 4. It says, let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. The only joy that our nations are going to have is the joy of Jesus Christ. Some of you have been watching the news and you're worried. Don't. You can't change anything about it. Don't worry. Right? I talked to my Marine son this morning. Am I worried? Nope. Because God is in control and sovereign over all things. And the only hope for our nation and any nation is the gospel of Jesus Christ that changes lives. And we need to be doing it here, there, and everywhere. Just this morning, we're talking about Mission Mosley. We have these cards that I have in my hand right here with my phone to say, hey, is it important for us to do it here? Absolutely. It's absolutely important for us to do it here so we can send people there. And our neighbors here need the hope of Jesus Christ just as much as their neighbors wherever they live are needing the hope of Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Father, thank you that, that Father, we, we are all given new lives in Christ. Father, the, the old things have passed away. Behold, the new has come. Father, thank you that that with the new lives that you have given us, you have given us a, a new marching order. We live intentionally for your glory, Lord, and we live intentionally to, to make you known in our neighborhoods and in the nations. Thank you for these, these brothers and sisters who are standing on stage with me this morning who are, are making the, the knowledge of Jesus Christ known so that people can call upon the name of the Lord and believe and be saved with people that we're not. Thank you for that call on their lives, but thank you for the call on our lives to make it known here. And Father, thank you for the power of prayer that undergirds all of that work. Father, thank you for the fact that we can give to support all of that work. Father, we can go in our neighborhoods and to the nations with our partners. And Father, we can send. And Father, I believe there's people sitting in here that need to be sent, that need to go and stay. And let us come alongside of them, praying, giving, going, and sending to them. Father, thank you for this privilege today to have our, our missionary partners here. Bless their conversations. Bless their newfound and old renewed relationships here. And Father, send them out encouraged from being here for a week. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, would you pray with me? God, thank you for the grace and mercy that you give. Uh, thank you for... The fact that you did come and take on our sin, um, God, we thank you that our redemption is not found in nails. God, our redemption is not found in wood. Lord, our redemption is not found in stone. God, our redemption is found in the wrath of God that was poured out on Christ. And the fact that he took our sin and gloriously rose from the dead, God, it was your love that held you there. God, it was your love that raised you up on the third day. God, it was your love that ascended into heaven, God, and it is your love that will come again for us. Uh, Lord, we bless your name. We love you. We thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you for today, which is Harvest Sunday. Um, God, where we come and we say, Lord of the harvest, send labors to your harvest field. God, Lord of the harvest, thank you for sending labors to your harvest field. And God, we know that you're asking us today to consider how we can pray, how we can give, how we can go, and Lord, where you're going to send us. And there's an answer 
for each person here today if they're so willing and so bold to pray that prayer. And so God, as we begin, Lord, just like we're going to end today in our time together, we ask you, Lord, how can we praise you? God, we thank you that you're good. Lord, I thank you in Psalm 104 today, you were reminding me to bless the Lord because you're very great and that you're full of splendor and majesty. God, I repent for, for getting distracted week in and week out, Lord. I repent for times that I wanna do what I wanna do rather than doing what you're asking me to do. Lord, I repent, God, for anger that I hold in my heart. Lord, I repent, God, for allowing hurt to define me rather than allowing the God who made me to define me. Lord, we ask, God, that you would do immeasurably more than what we could ever ask or imagine. Um, Lord, we ask that you provide every resource needed to send the missionaries that you're calling. And God, we ask that you would help us as we continue to expand this ministry center. God, we pray that you would provide every resource needed for that. Um, God, we want to reach our neighbors, and we're serious about it. Um, Lord, we yield ourselves to you this morning, saying, God, all these songs that we're singing, yet not I, but through Christ in me. What a glorious hymn. What a glorious statement to say. We need you. Um, God, I pray you'd put a specific dollar amount in our head and heart for how much we're supposed to give. Lord, to Mission Mosley. Lord, I pray that you would help us to know how can we plan to sacrificially give over the next three years? I pray that we would genuinely consider how, how are we supposed to go? Is it short term? Maybe it's midterm, God. Maybe, maybe we're going to get this month or two or three uh, that we could take between jobs or maybe our job would allow us to work from there. And God, I pray you just say go and we'd go. We'd be obedient. Lord, we yield ourselves to you. And God, we know that you're sending us somewhere to help us to say yes to you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and have a seat if you would. Um, I'll just be honest. I am not certain where the Lord's going to take this today. I have a plan, but the Lord is stirring in me. I got to play the piano for that song. So that just changed my life, okay? Um, I know it's fun to sing. It's really fun to play and sing sometimes. Um, and that is an act of grace and faith for me, okay? So when I was coming through college, my undergrad was music education. And I, I figured out real quick when we planted a church that I was going to have to learn how to play and sing. And I was not comfortable with that. I'm comfortable singing all day long. But doing this and doing la, la, la does not always come the easy to me. I am enamored with guitar players who can play and sing. I don't know how you do this and do something different with your voice. And drummers, I don't even understand you. I think you're another level of glory that maybe one day in heaven I'll experience. And I know some of you are like, drums are the devil. I don't think so, yo. Read the Bible. Anyway, so um, I mean, it just is. I mean, it's amazing how you can do one thing with your foot. I'll just, I'll give you, I'm going to tell you a secret. Okay. Modern worship experience. You ready for this? You're, I'm going to melt your mind. You ready? Drummers are like old school organ players. If you don't know anything about an organ, then you're missing it. An organ, you played with your feet and your hands, and they had two keyboards. All right, I don't know if you've ever seen like Earth, Wind, and Fire, when they're like, ah, you know what I mean, stuff like that, or ever watch um, uh, what's Billy Joel play under his piano like this? Have you ever seen that? Don't act like you're sanctified and haven't seen it. Okay, I have. All right, so you know what I'm talking about? All right, that's an old school organ player. Those ladies amazed me, man. How you could be four foot two and play like that? I don't know, man. I don't know. I grew up in church and I was, I was enamored with the organ. You want to thrill my soul? Play victory in Jesus on an organ. Hallelujah. All right? Play um, a mighty fortress is our God on an organ. And I am like in the next level of heaven. Okay? I mean, I like that just as much as I like yet not I through Christ in me. And I know some of you are like, so we're getting an organ in the new church. Probably not, guys. Anyway, so, um, and it's because they're not training them now. I mean, they're not. It's sad. It's, it's, they're still there, but man, they're just not training them as much. You're like, Pastor, you like an organ? I'm wearing a jacket today, okay? I like an organ. Anyway, so I'm kidding. All right. I'm just blowing up stereotypes. I love you. Let's get to the text. All right. So 
Here we go. All right. Um, so we started in January in John 13, and we've been doing this, what's called an upper room discourse with Jesus. So right before he died and he ascended into heaven. Okay. We ascended. He, actually, he died and then he resurrected. Then he ascended. Heaven. Right before all of that, the most major like apex of Christian history of what it means to just be a person and that he redeemed the world. Jesus met with his 12. He pulled them in. One of them was going to betray him. He peaced out somewhere between end of John 13, beginning of 14. He left, right? You Remember that part? Um, so Judas leaves and he's got his 11 and he's pouring into them. And here are the last things that he said. First thing, love one another, right? Jesus said a new commandment that I give you. You are to what? Love one another as I have what? Loved you. You also are to what? Love one another. He says it three times, three times here. I can't remember the last part, so let me make sure I look at it. Yeah. By this, all people will know that you're my disciples if you what? Yeah, I tried to make it simple. All right. It was love one another each time. If you're just now catching on, you're slow. Pick up the pace. All right. If you want to happen with me, we got to pick it up a little bit faster. All right. So the first thing he said, love what? One another. Why did he have to tell us that? We forget. Peter, he forgot right? He abandoned Christ. He denied him three times. He felt sorry for himself, was navel gazing. And then Jesus rose from the dead. He had heard about that, but what did he do? He went back to what? Went back to fishing. When God had told him earlier, three years before, to be fishers of what? Men. And so then the miracle happens. The fish fill the, the he, oh, it's Jesus. He starts swimming, gets there. He, Jesus made breakfast. Isn't that, you got to believe if Jesus cooked breakfast is good. It's better than Francis Crispin good, right? You know what I mean? You know it's good, right? It's better than your mama good. Sorry, mama, but Jesus cooked better than you. Anyway, so, so Jesus made breakfast. And then what did he tell Peter to restore him? Three times. Three times that he had denied him. Three times he said, do you what? Love. You love. Are we catching that? He's telling Peter, look, love. Love one another, right? If you love me, feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my lambs. If you love me, feed my sheep. Love one another. If you get nothing from today, get that. That's why that's our, our theme verse for the year, all right? This whole series, love one another, all right? Second thing, though, how do we love one another? We humbly serve one another. That's how you do it. You got to get dirty. Humbly serve one another. Jesus said in John 13, verse 14, if I then your Lord and teacher, so if he's Lord and teacher, he gets to tell us what to do, amen? If I, y'all are not amen, and I, we're going to have issues today, all right? If you're already disobedient this close to, all right, so he said, if I then your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also ought to what? Wash one another's feet, humbly serve each other. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, don't miss this. He says, blessed are you if you what? Do them. You say, how do I love one another? Humbly serve one another. Humbly serve your family, humbly serve your church family, and humbly serve the lost. You say, I'm supposed to serve lost people? That's the only way they'll understand the gospel. Amen. The only way a lost person's going to get the gospel, they're expecting you to try to one-up them. That's what the world does. Dog eat dog, right? When we come and serve them, they're like, I don't understand you. Praise the Lord. We don't understand why the God of the universe took off his robe of glory and came down and served us. Don't get that, but I'm glad he did, aren't you? Third thing, all right, so what does that look like? As you get going, guess what? You're gonna have to hang on to King Jesus. You're gonna have to hang on to his word because it's not gonna make sense sometimes. You're gonna, you're gonna hit hard times. And so he said, believe that Jesus will fulfill his word. Jesus said, let not your heart be what? Troubled. Troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in what? Me. What that means is people are going to die and you're not going to understand it. You're going to lose things and you're not going to understand it. People whom you trusted are going to betray you and you're not going to understand it. He said, in this world, you're going to have trouble, right? Let not your heart be troubled. Believe. How do we overcome trouble? Belief in God. How do you overcome heartache? Belief in God. How do you overcome when you sin and you didn't think that you would? Belief in God. Not belief in you. Are you kidding me? Just listen to your heart. You'll go straight to hell. Just listen to your heart. No, just listen to the word. Just believe in God. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And he said, 
in my father's house are what? Many mansions, right? If it weren't so, I wouldn't have told you. So I told you, believe it. Believe in God, believe also in me. And then he just laid the laser on them. I am the way, the truth, and what? The life. No man comes to the Father except by Jesus. There isn't another option. Buddha is not an option. Hinduism, not an option. Siddhartha, not an option. All right? Muhammad, not an option. Trump, definitely not an option. Biden, not an option. I'm serious. Like the people we place our faith, hope, and trust in, they are not it. Jesus is it. You want hope? You want hope? And ain't in Iran or Israel, it's in Jesus. Our hope is in the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by him. How do we love one another, humbly serve one another? We have to believe God and his word. That's how we overcome. And then we have peace in Jesus, so take heart. Because I know, I know you're like, Pastor, that's great. Way to cheer, rah, rah. But man, I got real heartache. I know, I do too. I got real heartache. I know, I I have real issues in life. And Jesus said, I've said these things to you that in me, don't miss this, you may have what? peace. In this world, you will have tribulation. You will have trouble. He says, but take what? Heart. If Jesus had to tell the 11 that were around him to take heart, how much more so does he need to tell us? Take heart. This is why we gather with the body. You know why? We need to take heart. We gather with the body so that we can take heart. Take heart. I know you got discouraged on Tuesday. I know you kicked the cat on Thursday. I know you did. I saw you. All right? Take heart. Jesus said what? I've overcome the world. Right? You have peace. I get it. But peace doesn't come from you finally solving that problem. Peace comes from him. He didn't say in the solving of the problem you have peace. He said what? In me you have peace. Right? Take heart. So love one another, humbly serve one another, believe God in his word, and then take heart, right? Take heart in Jesus. Take heart in the Lord because we have peace in him. And the last thing, and here's, here's where, here's where we're, we're doing life. Because I know it'd be great if Jesus, once he saved us, just beamed us up, Scotty. That'd be great, right? Whew, here we are. But that's not how it works. We have to endure this thing called life. And so he, he sanctifies us, not in our feelings. He doesn't sanctify us in our thoughts. He sanctifies us in the truth. That's the verse for April. Sanctify them. He's praying. John 17 is the high priestly prayer. That upper room discourse in 13, 14, 15, and 16 all leads up to the apex of Jesus praying for us. We talked about that on Easter and last week, right? He's praying for us. And what is the prayer that matters the most to the believer? Sanctify them in your truth. Your word is truth. That's the most important thing for you and me that our hearts, that our minds are bathed in truth. You say, where do you get truth from? Right here. It's a daily flushing of the world and a daily intake of what God says is true. You cannot trust your thoughts. You cannot trust your emotions. Even the good ones, you can't. Sanctify them in your truth because your word is truth. And then he prayed, as, this is crazy, truth is Mary descending. He said, sanctify them in your truth, the word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I what? Send them. With what? Truth. That's why we say here at Parkway, we're real people walking with Christ, inviting others, and serving together to reach our what? Our neighbors and who? The nations, right? With what? With the truth. With with the truth. As we're sanctified in the truth, we take the truth to others. God is constantly building his church. Did you know God never takes a day off building his church? Never takes a day off. You say, oh, 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 he's building his kingdom. Yes, the primary way that he builds his kingdom is by planting churches. You don't believe me? Go look. Go look. Jesus is the one who's going to sustain the church. Jesus said, upon this what? Rock, I will what? Build my church. 
Here's the crazy part. When Jesus said that, the disciples looked around and went, what's a church? They didn't know what a church was. Jesus had not died. He had not resurrected. He hadn't ascended into heaven and he had not sent his Holy Spirit. The church had not been born. They had synagogue. They're like, but that's not what Jesus said. He didn't say upon this rock, I'll build my synagogue. He said, upon this rock, I'll build my what? My, what's a church then? A church is a called out group of people who gather. It's a gathering of called out ones, an assembled group of called out ones by God. That means if you've been saved, you haven't been saved unto Jesus and yourself. You've been saved unto Jesus and his body. There's two definitions of his body, the physical body of Jesus, and you're looking at it. I know some of you are like, but I don't like the way you look, tough man. I'm the body of Christ. I love you. But there's a lot of me. Praise the Lord, right? No, I mean, I mean pray, but we're saved unto one another as well. You have a body of believers around you that are meant to encourage you. The people whom I love the most are the church, my family and the church. And I'm thankful that the members of my family have become part of the church. Amen? Amen. I love Jesus, and Jesus loves me best through his church. And I know that's hard for some of you here because you've been hurt deeply by the church. So have I. Last time I checked, family members, we do that to one another. Jesus has never hurt me, though. Not without something purposeful for his good, for his glory and my good. So we're an assembled group of people called out by God who do a few things. We hear, read, study, memorize, meditate, proclaim, and do the Word of God. What that means is if I only try to hear the Word of God every week, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and he can rob it. But if I hear and I read and I study and I memorize and I meditate, and I'm like, Pastor, what's meditate? Is that Eastern? Um, no, that is not meditation, all right? Meditation is what you crowd into your mind to push out the things that don't need to be there. That's meditation. Meditation is right before you go to sleep, when you lay your head down at night and the lights go off, that's where your mind goes. That's that's meditation. Meditation is when you get in the car and you're driving, you realize you didn't turn the radio on and you've been driving for 10 minutes, or you didn't start a song, you've been driving for 10 minutes. Whatever you're thinking about, that's meditation. And you have to train your mind to know what to meditate on. So it's not what I'm going to do with this kid, what I'm going to do with this problem. It's, oh, why am I memorizing scripture? Because Jesus said, in me, you will have what? Peace. You will have peace. In this world, you will have what? Trouble, but take heart, right? What? I've overcome the world. So I can memorize, so I meditate. And then it's not just me trying to do the meditation thing, but I proclaim and I do the word of God, which is why we're talking about our cinders. We had a group of cinders up here this morning. Aren't you grateful for them? Hey guys, I love them. You wanna know why I'm still at this church? God called me to be here to send them. And sending them just doesn't mean send them to the field. It means keeping them there, praying for them, and then when they come home, loving them. The only reason I'm not with them there is because God called me to stay here to love and encourage and bless them until the day I die. And if God changes my calling, great. But right now, and I told you guys a minute, uh, a few weeks ago when we were talking about sending out Caleb and Braley and planning a church, we're like, okay, uh, I asked you to pray. We got to lunch. My son asked me that day, well, dad, you gonna pray? You asked everybody else to pray. You gonna pray? And I'm like, Yes, thank you for saying that. Cool. So I did, and I prayed. I asked the Lord, God, are you sending me? And he said, no, I told you to send. So that's what I'm going to tell you to do. He, you said, he answered you? He did. He answered me through his word and prayer. I know what I'm called to do. I know what I'm called to do. And so many of you are like with us going, yes, yes, let's send, let's go to them. I love what Pastor Mac's doing over at North. Praise God, right? I love what Fred and Casey are doing at the Fixed Chapel, man. God's done some crazy stuff with them. Told you a lot about that last week. Excited to see what God's going to do through Caleb and Braley. Caleb, where are you at? You in here? Get up here real quick. All right. So come on, quick, quick, quick. Everybody get up for Caleb. Let's go. All right. So God answers some serious prayer this week. All right. Caleb, like most good pastors, are worry warts. Praise the Lord. Anyway, I'm kidding. I'm just messing with you. Yeah. So tell them a little bit about what God did this week. All right. For yeah. You. So does anybody here ever get anxious? Anybody? Great. You're a human being. Awesome. So yeah, I get anxious too. And typically, well, through this journey of church planting, the Lord has showed me that I get the most anxious when I try to start being God in my own life. And I start to try to make things happen on my own. And so the Tuesday, or Tuesday, I come into church, and I'm like, Derek, man, I'm stressed. 
I got some things that we got to get, we got to get squared away before we move. And I am nervous about these things. And Braley and I and many others have been praying constantly for a place to meet and for a place that we can live and call home while we're in Virginia Beach. And we didn't have those things. And I was stressed out. Okay, very stressed out. And week in, week out, I would get asked that question. Hey, do you have a place to meet yet? Do you have a place to live yet? No. That was the answer. So through, this, through our time together on Tuesday, I prayed and said we were, we were talking about a, a church that I needed to build a relationship with while I was down there, London Bridge Baptist Church. And we prayed, prayed about a place to live, prayed about a place to meet, and said amen, and the phone rang. I was like, okay. And uh, the, the dude on the phone, I didn't know the, it was a Tampa area code, so I didn't answer it, but he left me a message. He said, hey, this is Kenny Bass from London Bridge Baptist Church. Say what? And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So he was calling just to connect with me because we're going to be teaming up with some things uh, in the spring of 25, and he uh, introduced himself, and at the end of our conversation, he, he goes, all right, well, I got to go. I'm fixing an air conditioning unit for a rental property for a friend. And I was like, that is, that's interesting. <laughs> It's like, could you, wh where is this rental property of yours? He says, well, it's in Virginia Beach. Uh, it's actually in the area code 23464, I think Say is what? where it is, which is right where we're planting. And I was like, okay. So come to find out, this place is exactly what we would need, and it's vacant. And the people that are looking to rent it out are two missionaries in Central Asia. Say what? And so every dollar that we pay in rent is going to go towards supporting them while they're on the field. It's crazy. I get off the phone with him, and, and I walk out, and, and I, I talk to Wendy, and I say, you know, God is just so good. Like, he's so good at being God. And I'm over here, and I'm just worrying, like, sweat pouring about these things. And he just, like, just snaps his fingers, and it's done. <laughs> so then a little bit later that day, finish up, leave church, same day. Get, same day, get an email from the, the guy that I had emailed six weeks ago about utilizing this movie theater space for us to meet in. And he's like, hey, I tried, to, I tried to call you, you didn't pick up. And so I got on the phone with him, and he said, I would be more than happy to have you in the space that you asked about, uh, but I need you out by 10 a.m. every Sunday. It's 10.21. <laughs> And I know you guys are already tired already. And so that really wouldn't work. He said, but I've got a better spot for you. Uh, and it, you can be in there until 12. So you can have the space from 6 a.m. to 12 every single day or every single Sunday. It's got four spaces. Do whatever you want. Have, you know, do whatever you need. And so we got a place to meet and a place to live within six hours of each other. So that, that's what the Lord's doing right now. Uh, and it's crazy, and I'm just glad that I get to watch it. Like, I don't even, like, I'm, I'm good. I don't even need to be a part of it. Just let me watch it, God. Like, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, so what Derek said is, man, pray and consider going with us. All right, we've got a place to meet. We've got a place to live. But, man, we need a team. Okay, because it's not about starting a church. It's about reaching people. Come on. It's about making disciples. And that takes people to reach people. Okay, and so pray, consider moving to Virginia Beach with us. Pray, consider how you can support Crossview Community Church financially. Uh, that is a huge help, whether that's the church or that's Braley and I as individuals. Uh, that's greatly appreciated. And if you want to know what it's like to crack open the word with uh, me and my wife in a small group setting, and you're maybe interested in what it looks like to be a part of Crossview Community Church, we've got a virtual Bible study that we're starting today at 4 p.m. So if you're curious about that, you can... Yeah, uh, send a request to my email, C Eckerd at parkwayfamily.org. We would love to have you there. Yeah. So that'll be at four today. And so that's that's my update. That's life right now. Amen. So. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Let's pray. God, I pray just for that. Um, Lord, uh, we're faithful sometimes to pray and ask, God, and we're not always as faithful to say thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Lord, I think about the ten lepers that you healed. God, only one came back and said thanks. And so, God, we want to be like that one leper to come back and say, mm, we can't do any of this without you. 
and none of what we have came from us. The building that we're in and the land that we're worshiping on today, you gave us, Father. Um, you gave us this land 20 years ago, um, 21 years ago now. Um, so thank you, God. Thank you for being a God who faithfully gives, God who faithfully sends, God um, who faithfully provides. And uh, God, I pray that others more would consider, maybe I need to go. Um, maybe with Caleb, maybe to the ends of the earth. I don't know. But you're sending us, God. Help us to be willing to say yes to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, bro. Get up for him one more time. He did great. <clears throat> so, um, so we say that we want to be real people, walking with Christ, inviting others, serving together, reach our neighbors and the nations. That's what that looks like through church planting. That we want to hear, read, study, memorize, meditate, proclaim, and do the Word of God. We're going to practice the ordinances of Christ. That's what a church does. What is he going to plant? What are our missionaries planting? They're planting churches. They're just doing it somewhere else. All right, and churches are not buildings, churches are people. All right, they're disciples who are reached, and that's how Jesus told us to go. And we baptize and we do the Lord's Supper. That's the main things that God told the church to do when they gather. All right, we're supposed to go out and evangelize, we're supposed to go out and teach the word, but when we gather, there's really only two things He told us to do baptize and Lord's Supper. We bring other believers in, we baptize them to say they are now followers of Jesus. Praise God, next week at the 11 o'clock service, we're going to baptize one who I've been praying for personally for a few years, and it's exciting to see him say yes to the Lord. We baptize some, yeah, man, that's worth getting jacked about, man. And then we also hold one another accountable to holy living in the Great Commission. And that's what we're doing today. This is accountability for us as a church to say, God, what are you up to, and what will we be willing to say yes to? Like, what are we willing to say yes to when it comes to holding one another accountable, not just to holy living, but also to the Great Commission? And by the way, it's much easier to live for Christ when you're on mission with Him. I personally think we ought to take the S out of missions. It's just the mission, whether we do it here or there. So there's four things that we, we asked you to do. I'm going to skip the First Timothy part, guys, and we're going to keep rolling. So four things that he asked us to do. Um, over the last 40 days, we've called our church to prayer. And there, there, actually, I will reference the verse in 1 Timothy chapter 4, the last one. He says that we're made holy by the word of God and prayer. There's two things, two things that fuel this whole journey for us, and it's the word of God and prayer. And so what we've called our church to do is to do that, to devote themselves to the reading of God's word and to prayer. And we asked you three times a day to pray at 10.02, Right? at 2.47 p.m. and at 9.38. I know some of you are like, well, I've only done that like four times. Fine. Will you just keep doing that? Does that make sense? Like, will you keep praying? Our 10.02 alarms went off and we're gonna pray in just a minute for that 10.02. If it's 10.25, it's fine, okay. But we've been praying, Lord of the harvest, send labors to your harvest field. We've been praying, Lord, would you add day by day those who are being saved? That's Acts 2.47. Matthew 9.38, Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are what? Few. So he said, beseech the Lord of the harvest. I mean, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send labors to your field. If Jesus gave us prayer requests, don't you think we should pray the prayer requests Jesus told us to pray? Amen. So that's what we're calling ourselves to, just to pray the things that Jesus asked us to pray. We're asking you to do that with us. We need all of us doing that. Not just the leaders, not just the choir, not just the worshiping, not just the, the folks that serve in preschool and the folks that serve in children. We need all of us doing it, every last one of us. And so there's been four things that we've committed to with prayer. Praying, repenting, asking, and yielding. So would you just take a moment right now and just do that? Would you just pray with me? You pray for about 30, 45 seconds, and I'm going to pray out loud, and then we're going to keep rolling with a few more things. But God, we just need to pray. God, we praise you because you're good. Lord, I praise you with Psalm 104. It says that we're to bless the Lord because you're very great. 
Um, you're full of splendor and majesty. You said that you made your ministers flames of fire. And God, I pray that all of us as ministers of your word, God, would become like flames of fire. Um, God, we repent, God, for getting distracted. We repent, God, for sinning in ways we never imagined. We ask that you would do immeasurably more than what we could ask or imagine. Would you send laborers to your harvest field, God? Send people along with Caleb and Braley. Send people to the key shores this year. God, send people to the analysis with analysis next year. God, send people to the wisdoms this year. God, send people, Lord, um, to the Garinos, Father. Send people to Ben, God. Send people to Natalie, Lord, to work alongside them. Send people to places we don't even know yet. God, send, please. And God, we yield ourselves to you to say, we will be it. And we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. So we've asked you to pray. We've also asked you to give. Um, so there's two things with giving. There's tithing and there's offerings. I know some people are like, the tithe doesn't exist anymore. It was only the Old Testament. Well, I believe in the whole Bible, don't you? Um, and so tithe just means tenths. So it just means like we give God a portion regularly of, of what, what God gives us. That's what a tithe is. And at Parkway, um, that's what we're asking. We have a harvest tithe here. We follow biblical teaching of giving tithes and offerings. So the tithe is the amount that is given at regular intervals through the local church. In this case, Parkway Baptist Church. So when we give our harvest tithe, put this graphic up here. just want you to see what that looks like. Um, every $100 that comes in, it gets split. $10 leaves immediately. So we tithe what you give us uh, as a church. So we take $10 that goes away from here. And what that does is goes to support what's called the Co-op Program. $4.90 works in church planting here in the state. And then $5.10 go to national endeavors. Half of that goes to what's called the International Mission Board, which is our primary partner in sending missionaries. Ben and Natalie were both sent through the IMB. So those dollars went to fund getting them there, to train them and to get them there. For every missionary that gets sent in a year, it costs about $100,000 to train them and send them and get them there and keep them there for a year. All right. Now beyond that, it's a little less because once they're there, it's not as expensive to live. But getting them there costs a good amount of money. Just to give you an idea. For each missionary group that goes, whether they're individual, couples, families, $2.55 goes to the North American Mission Board Church Planting. So the money that we've sent away, some of it's going to come back to help support Caleb and Braley for the next three years. Isn't that cool? Isn't that amazing? I love being part of what we're part of. I think it's fantastic. Some of that money is also being used to support Fred and Casey Weymouth at the Fixed Chapel. It's awesome, guys. Mark Turner up in Philadelphia, who I text this morning, just tell him we're praying for him. He texts back saying, I'm praying for y'all. The work that we did in Philly, the work that our students are going to go and do at Infuge next, uh, uh, this summer in Philly, not on Kissington Street, by the way. But anyway, so just for clarity, in case you're like, ah, all right, so, but they're going to go and do work in Philly, work alongside Mark Turner, church planner there. It's fantastic, man. It's exciting to be part of the body, right? Then the other $90 is used here at Parkway. Ten of that is used for mission endeavors. It's actually more than $7.56 now. It's more like eight twenty, eight thirty, dollars um, And then another, like, $82, so to speak, is used. So that goes away. Um, and then the other $82 is used to keep the lights on and to do the work that we do just here specifically in Mosley. So just to give you an idea, that's, that's just what we tithe, all right? That's our regular giving day in and day out. But then we also have what's called an offering. And an offering is special emphasis things. We're like, hey, we want to give something beyond out of a spirit of generosity. Like, hey, the Lord's stirring. I want to give to church planting. So we have three kind of primary things that we're giving to right now with special offerings. One's our Acts 1-8 Global Missions Offering. Those missionaries that stood up here, every one of them are supported by Acts 1-8. If we stop giving to Acts 1-8, we stop supporting them. So we want to keep supporting them. Um, Acts 1-8, a portion of that also helps with the IMB to keep Ben and Natalie where they are. You say, we give you more to missions? Yes. Our covenant together as a church, we want to see if we can give enough to at least give and support two people in sending them every year total. Obviously, we have way more than that because we don't, we, we're not their full funding. We're not. They have partners in other places, and we're very thankful for that because not one church can do it all. Amen? Um, and then also church planting. Our goal, we want to send, after we launch Caleb and Braley, we want to send another one and another one and another one and another one and another one. And some of them will be close partners and some will be further away partners, and that's okay. God told us to keep doing this until he returns. And until he comes back, we're going to keep doing what he said. Amen? 
And then the third thing is what we've called ourselves to as a church with Mission Mosley. And we've asked you to pray about giving a seed offering to help expand the footprint of this campus so that we can make room for our neighbors, not so that we can get more people in worship so we can train more to send more out. Um, and so we've asked you to pray about giving a seed offering. I think we're somewhere in the neighborhood of, Steve, where are you at? Steve, Eddie? Is it how much right now? A little over 40,000 has been given just over the last five, six weeks. That's awesome, guys. Seriously, it's fantastic. Which puts us a little over the 700,000 mark to begin the building. Praise the Lord. Just specific designated in, in, in building. Fantastic. It's awesome. And then we've also asked you, we have these commitment cards that we sent out that most of you got in the mail. If you didn't get one, we've got plenty today. And we're asking that our ushers a little later on will help give one out during the response time. We're asking that you pray and return this before you leave today. To say, hey, this, this is just my commitment to say, I'll do this. No one's going to contact you. No one's going to email you. No one's going to follow up with you. This is just you telling us, hey, I'll commit and support in the endeavors of this church. Um, and then uh, that's giving. So I'm going to ask right now, you just pray, Lord, what is that for me? And actually, I'm going to ask some of the guys who are helping pass out the cards. If you didn't get one, they're just going to start make, making their way around. Just raise your hand and they'll give you one. All right, but let's pray. So Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, you would give us a specific dollar amount to say, yes, this is what I'll give in a seed offering. And yes, this is what I'll do to help expand and continue this work over the next three years. I know for my wife and I and her family, God, we've been praying, seeking the Lord's face, asking him, what should we do? And God, you've given us a number and it's bigger than what we can afford, but I believe that you can do that. In Jesus' name, amen. Second thing, uh, or third thing that we've talked about is how can we go? What does going look like? It looks just like our, our mission statement, walking with Christ, right? Being real people, walking with Christ, inviting others and serving together to reach our neighbors and the nations. How can you begin walking with Christ? Where do you need to begin reading the word? That's how you go right now. Who, who do you need to begin inviting to walk with Jesus with you? That's how you go, all right? Who, who, who need to, where do you need to start serving in the church and beyond the church? How can God use you to reach others? That's how you need to be praying right now for your going. So let's ask the Lord. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, you'd speak to us about going. Lord, how can I go? Me, Derek, how can I go this year? Lord, you already answered the prayer for what I'm going to be doing in October. God, you've got some things for me already, but I know there's more. And so I just ask, God, where can I go? I know you've called me to Philly, God. I know there's things you want me to do. God, help me to say yes to you. Here in this, in this community, God, there's things that you want me to do. Lord, would you speak to me in Jesus' name? Amen. And then the last thing is sin. As the team comes. We are all senders. So there's three ways that we send. We pray, we mobilize, and we go. So here's the send for small groups. We're going to start there. Some of you have been the same small group for three years, four years, five years. I think it's great. But you have neighbors who desperately need to be invited, and the house that you meet in is full. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Get uncomfortable and get okay with the fact that you're not going to be with your BFF, that they'll still pray with you even if you don't see each other every week, and start a small group. Some of you know how to teach. You know how to open God's Word and facilitate something, and you're just like, it's hard, it's uncomfortable, I'd have to get to know new people. I'm glad that wasn't Jesus' attitude in coming to us. So can I just ask you to, to just say yes to Him? Just say yes, say okay. I know there's, there's people that need the gospel and that's more important than me, than me feeling good, than me feeling comfortable. So would you consider starting one? There are others, missionaries, that God's calling. I know he said yes, he said, he said yes to you. There are others in church planting. He's told you, yes, I want you to consider going. I don't know. The Lord is speaking to you. So the, the question I want you to do during the invitation is with an open hand. Say, God, here am I. Send me. It might be to join this church. It might be to receive the gospel of Jesus Christ today. I don't know. I do know that he's a big God and he talks to all of us differently with the same mission. Amen. 
just like in the army and just like in the Navy, just like in the Marines, we all have different jobs, but we're all on one mission. Amen. Would you stand with me? Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, God, we would say yes to you. Um, Lord, we would pray, give, go, and send. So God, help us to say yes. Pray for anyone who's never received the gospel, Lord, they'd come and just receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. Talk to one of our pastors and leaders. God, others who just need to come and pray. Maybe they need to be encouraged. Maybe they need to encourage others. I pray they'd go to them, do just that. Lord, some who need to be baptized need to come forward and just say, I need to be baptized. Lord, some who need to join this fellowship, some who need to say yes to you, I'll go. But Lord, prepare us all. We pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. You come as we sing together.
God, we love you. We thank you for the day. Um, God, I thank you for this sweet body of Christ. Um, I thank you that your spirit is moving and has moved. I thank you that people have said yes to you and are still saying yes to you. Um, God, and we know that our time of response doesn't end just because a song is over. Um, Lord, our time of response is constant, God, as we read your word and interact with your word, and we prayerfully say yes to you and we go. Um, so God, would you help us to do just that? Um, we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Mike's got a few things for us. Go ahead and have a seat just for a moment. All right. Well, hey, thank you so much for being with us today. If you're a guest, visitor, family member, or friend, welcome. We're so glad that you worshiped here at Parkway today. Thank you for joining us as we've opened the Word today, as we've talked a lot about what it means to pray, give, go, and send. And so I want to encourage you as you leave today uh, to make sure you connect with our missionary partners. They have different tables out there. Some of them even have uh, goodies on their table for you to try. Uh, I just tried a, a hot date out there. Um, and uh, pretty, pretty, pretty cool experience. Um, and some, some, some coffee. Um, uh, but she, uh, Amy told me, I told her, I'm not a coffee drinker. She said, just pretend it's tea. And it was actually pretty good. I liked it. So, um, so it was, it, it, yeah, so go connect with them. Uh, and I just encourage you to pray for them. As you stop by their table, just take a moment and pray over them. How cool would it be? We walk out there and we got all these people just praying over our missionary partners, man. It'd be cool. Be great. So, again, thank you for being here. Also, if you have those cards, those commitment cards, you can drop them off um, uh, by our guys at the doors. Also, what's cool about that is you can, if you're not ready to make a commitment right now, you can go online, maybe later today or even this week, uh, and go to our website. You can make that commitment online at our website, on our website. And so, I want to encourage you to do that. As well, and man, we get excited talking about some of that. You've heard stories today from missionary partners, from Caleb. Man, the Lord is working. The Lord is stirring. And what's cool about Mission Mosley is Mission Mosley, yes, is is focused on the now, right? But here's the cool thing: is is as Mission Mosley takes off, man, it's going to impact generations to come with the gospel of Jesus Christ. The eternal impact is going to be great, not just now, but man, for generations after those, the, the, the now generation. And that's what excites me so much uh, about Mission Mosley and, and, and what the Lord's doing. And so, Real quick, just a few announcements. Uh, a lot happening next Sunday. Uh, next Sunday after the 11 o'clock service, we invite those of you who have been joining us uh, and, and visiting us uh, over the last uh, maybe couple weeks, a uh, couple of months, or maybe even a couple of years, and would love for you to come and uh, be a part of our membership class. And this is a, a chance for you to get to know more about Parkway. Uh, in fact, some of the information that Pastor Derek gave today, we talk about more in depth during that time. We get to hear from you as well, but then also talk about what it means to be a member at Parkway, what it means to to be a part of the Parkway family. And so uh, that's next Sunday. So if you want to be a part of that, we feed you lunch, all right? Uh, and uh, we have child care available as well. So you just go to our website and uh, find uh, that graphic there, uh, that, uh, that logo uh, for the church membership class and sign up and register and we'll take good care of you. It'll be a great time. Also, uh, next Sunday after the 11 o'clock service, you heard from one of our partners uh, that serve in Northern Virginia. And so uh, they're going to have a, an interest meeting next Sunday for a couple of projects that are going to, to go and serve alongside of those partners later this year. And so uh, if you're interested in finding out more information about that, uh, that's going to happen after the, the 11 o'clock service next Sunday as well. And then next Sunday night, I want to talk to my, my 6th through 12th graders, our students, and, and their parents. We're going to have what we do every year called Students United. Uh, and we're inviting the parents to be a part of this this year. And this is a time where we gather as a student ministry, and we take our entire gathering time, and we dedicate it to the Lord in prayer and in worship. And so it'll be an interactive prayer and praise night. Um, and it's always one of my favorite events that we do all year where we gather and we, we put our phones away for an hour and a half, amen, right? And we focus that time on the Lord. And it is a, a, a just an incredible time with our students and parents. You're, we invite you to be a part of it this year as well. So we're excited about that again next Sunday at five o'clock. So, uh, so that's all that I have. Let me pray for us, and then we uh, will let you go. Father, we thank you so much for today. God, I thank you for just the reminder of, of our mission and our, of our vision here at Parkway. Lord, to, to pray, to give, to go, and to send. So Lord, I do pray, as, as Pastor Derek has already prayed, Lord, that you continue to do a work in the hearts of those that you're calling out. God, that, that you do a work in the hearts of those who, who you're leading to, to give, Lord, and, and even to send. And so, Lord, I just, I just pray, 
God, you continue to do a work. Lord, we give you praise for the reports that we've heard today, the stories. God, how you are actively working, Lord, to, to, to do things that we, we, we'd never even think or imagine. But God, you are taking care of it because you are great. You are awesome. So Lord, as we carry the name of Jesus this week, God, I pray that we would be quick to give that name away. God, we would be quick to share boldly and confidently and joyfully the good news of the gospel to those that you put in our path. Uh, Lord, we just give you praise today. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.